day in Metro Vancouver, we produce one billion liters of wastewater. We put in so many big sewers and water lines and change things around so much, it's just unreal. Behind me are the drum screens. They remove all the solids larger than just a few millimeters. Hello and welcome to the Sustainable Region. I'm Vanessa Timmer. A hundred years ago, the Lower Mainland was growing fast with nearly 200,000 residents. But there was a problem. In a word, sewage. Beaches were being closed, there was the risk of typhoid fever, and worries that contaminated water might impact salmon runs. It was time to build a wastewater system. One of the first steps was the creation of the Greater Vancouver Sewerage and Drainage Board in March of 1914. This decision created the framework for the regional approach to water infrastructure we know today. In this episode of the Sustainable Region, we'll learn how wastewater treatment is handled in our region. Visit with a man who spent decades capturing on film the growth of our sewer infrastructure and see how two secondary treatment plants in Metro Vancouver transform sewage into clean water. First, a big picture look at how Metro Vancouver deals with wastewater. Every day in Metro Vancouver, we produce one billion liters of wastewater. Efficient and effective management of these liquid wastes is essential to protect our environment and the livability of our region. Metro Vancouver operates and maintains the network of trunk sewers, pumping stations, and wastewater treatment plants that connect with municipal sewer systems. On average, each person in the region sends approximately 500 liters of wastewater to our regional wastewater treatment plants every day. In addition, wastewater from industrial, commercial, and institutional operations place unique demands on the sewerage system because they contain different contaminants. Primary treatment is performed by the Iona Island and Lionsgate wastewater treatment plants before the wastewater is released into the surrounding marine environment. Secondary treatment is performed by Lulu Island, Anasis Island, and Northwest Langley wastewater treatment plants before the wastewater is released into the Fraser River. As part of Metro Vancouver's responsibility to protect and enhance the natural environment, a secondary treatment plant is being built on the North Shore to help ensure liquid waste is managed safely, affordably, and effectively. This will replace the Lionsgate Wastewater Treatment Plant. Metro Vancouver requires financial support from both the federal and provincial government for this project. Metro Vancouver also collaborates with municipalities in the shared responsibility of sustainable management of stormwater across the region. The long-term vision for liquid waste management in Metro Vancouver is that all elements of liquid waste will be efficiently recovered as energy, nutrients, water, or other usable material, or else returned to the environment as part of the hydrological cycle in a way that protects public health and the environment. Welcome back to the Sustainable Region. Today, we're looking at Metro Vancouver's wastewater systems. The Anasis Island Secondary Treatment Plant is an important piece in the region's overall sewage treatment infrastructure, handling approximately 175 billion litres of wastewater every year. To see how it turns sewage into water that can be released back into the environment, let's take a tour of the facility. Wastewater can be treated in two ways. One method is called primary treatment, and the other is called secondary treatment. Anasis Island is a secondary treatment plant. Let's join Craig Meyer, a Metro Vancouver wastewater treatment operator, who will explain the various steps in the process. The first stage of treatment takes place in the influent pumping station, where solid debris is removed from the wastewater. We're 
should start removing all those sticks and rags and other things that people put down in the toilet and anything else you really can think of that these screens will remove. As the water flows through this tank, it's moving very, very slowly. All the scum, fats, oils, and greases are floating to the top of the surface. So we're gonna collect all these fats at the front of this tank, and all the heavy organic matter is settling down. At some wastewater plants, this would be the end of the process and water is discharged to the river or ocean. These are called primary wastewater plants. Other plants, however, continue treating the wastewater even more. These are called secondary wastewater treatment plants. It's time for secondary treatment. We have four large domes. So those are the trickling filters. Inside the trickling filters, we have about 15 feet of this plastic media. Basically what's happening is as the water filters through this media, the slime starts to grow that has all these organisms and they're going to start consuming all this soluble uh, organic matter and this really finely suspended organic matter that we couldn't settle out in the primary sedimentation tank. As the wastewater leaves the trickling filters, you can see those pyramid shaped domes. Underneath there is the solid contact tanks. We have secondary clarifiers. The wastewater slows down and it's going to reside in this tank for about four and a half hours. And in that four and a half hours, it's going to slowly settle out all that heavy material. And the water on the top is very clean. That's the water we're going to end up sending out to the river. To recap, large materials and grit are scraped and settled out. Oils are skimmed and sludge is settled out. Then bacteria consume tiny organic materials. After that, the bacteria clumps settle out. Finally, the treated water flows to the Fraser River. Metro Vancouver's award-winning video series highlights topics you may not consider when you think about living in our region. Where are the next million people in our region going to live? How do you bore a water tunnel under Grouse Mountain? How is eating fiber linked to generating electricity? Can you use light to disinfect drinking water? Plus, you'll never guess what we found in your garbage. Clean air, safe drinking water, waste reduction, and more. Get behind the scenes for the major projects, cutting edge science, and innovative solutions that sustain our livable region. Welcome back. In today's episode, we're looking at wastewater systems in Metro Vancouver. Our regional sewer infrastructure has been a work in progress for over a hundred years. One man who witnessed a big part of it is Albert Norman. As a shovel operator, Albert spent years digging the trenches that house our local water and sewer pipes. But it was his hobby that gave us a unique visual record of how it was done. I was born on April the 15th, 1917. I grew up in Burnaby, North Burnaby. While I was working out in Coquitlam, loading gravel, and the superintendent of the sewer department was looking after and he said, I want you to go down to the water district and see the superintendent and uh, see if they have a job down there for you. We got lots of shovel work up there. It would be a job as long as you want it. Wages those days were $1.25 an hour for shovel operators. I had to take a 12 cent cut. But anyway, it worked out in the end. It was the best thing I ever did. <laughs> Well, I started in 1950 with a camera club, so that's when I started taking pictures, 1950. Carried a camera all the time. <laughs> but it was a big camera, it wasn't a, 
It wasn't these automatic ones you have, no, you had to set them all yourself. And I'd go out at noontime when my shovel was down and see if I could find something, you know, to take a picture of. So in the meantime, I was taking pictures of the job. Well, I worked on the big pump station down at the waterfront at Camby Street. I put that line right out to the water, and underneath it, and through the tunnel, we put the line that they pump all the sewer up to 8th Avenue. And the Fraser River, we worked on that big one that we floated across and went to the Iona Island treatment plant. I was a construction supervisor for 10 years, in the last 10 years. DVRD and GVS, yeah, sewer department. Well, the sewers and water mains, that was a big job. That went from the Seymour under the Broad Inlet right up to the reservoir at Vancouver Heights. I worked on the Vancouver Heights site. The east pipe was uh, 40 feet long and 10 ton each. That was the last job I did. When I put the last valve in, I quit. I re retired. <laughs> I was 60 years old. Now I go down to Vancouver, I don't even know it's changed so much. <laughs> I've been retired now, 30, it'll be in April, 37 years. That's a long time. This is our place. It's our home. It's where we work. It's where we play. It's where we live. There is a place for everything. Everything has its place. MetroVancouverRecycles.org Welcome back to the Sustainable Region. I'm Vanessa Timmer. Today, we're looking at our regional wastewater systems. A relatively recent addition to Metro Vancouver's sewage infrastructure came in 1998, when it took over operation of the Northwest Langley Treatment Plant. Today, this facility handles over 12 million liters of wastewater every day, servicing residents and businesses in the surrounding area. Let's find out how they do it. My name is Brian Martin, and today we're at the Langley Wastewater Treatment Plant, and I'm going to show you how it all works. Three full-time employees are responsible for running the plant. In addition, a lab technician comes in twice a week to perform ongoing tests to ensure outflow is safe for release. This is the beginning of the wastewater treatment plant, called the Headworks. This is where we use two Archimedes screws to pump all of the solids and liquids up to the screens. Let's go take a closer look. An Archimedes screw is a simple and effective way to move water uphill. Also called a screw pump, the Langley version uses a helical screw turning within a tube to lift wastewater up to the drum screens at the start of the treatment process. Archimedes screws are often used in wastewater treatment plants because they can pump water with suspended debris and solids without clogging the system. Behind me are the drum screens. They remove all the solids larger than just a few millimeters. Removing plastic, fabric, and other non-organics is an essential step in preparing the wastewater for secondary treatment. Behind me is the equalization pond. Half the flow goes directly to the trickling filters. The other half comes here and gets aerated. The aeration helps prevent odors and also promotes biological activity for later on in the process. From the equalization pond, we come to one of the most important parts of the treatment plant process, the trickling filters. Wastewater comes out of the nozzles and hits deflectors. From there, the water falls onto a honeycomb-shaped lattice underneath the deflectors. Bacteria living on the honeycomb lattice consume organic material such as carbon, nitrogen, and sugars that are in the wastewater. 
Without the trickling filter, these bacterial microorganisms would end up being discharged into the Fraser River, where they would have a negative impact on the ecosystem. The bacteria forms a green slime, which sloughs off the honeycomb lattice and is sent to the activated sludge tanks. The activated sludge tank takes the bacterial slime from the trickling filters and mixes it with heavy, dense biomass so that it settles out easily in the clarifiers. The wastewater is also aerated in the sludge tank, which assists in making it safer for the environment. From the clarifier, the liquid is slowed down so that the heavy material drops to the bottom and the light, clear liquid ends up at the top. In the trickling filter process, we end up creating on site an excess of solids. These excess solids end up in our aerobic digester. The digester works as a giant liquid composter. All the organic carbon material is broken down using heat and oxygen. The final step is our chlorine contact tank. This is where we add chlorine to allow it to react with all the harmful pathogens in the water. At the end of the process, sodium bisulfate is added. This removes the chlorine, so our final effluent is safe for fish. The effluent is tested twice a day to make sure it is within acceptable limits. Over the years, the plant has undergone several upgrades. The next major project will be the installation of new secondary clarifiers, scheduled to begin operation in 2015. That's our show for today. Thanks for watching. You can watch, comment on, and share these stories and more at our blog, metrovancouvervideos.org. For the Sustainable Region, I'm Vanessa Timmer. See you next time.